In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at using the prototyper tool from justinmind.com. This is a great tool um, if, to make interactive wireframes with because it has a great set of widget libraries. To be able to download the software, um, there's a couple different versions that you want to look at. There's the Prototyper Pro Edition and the Free Edition. I'm using the Free Edition, but it's important to note that there's some great features in the Pro Edition that make it worthwhile. And if you find yourself doing a lot of website wireframes, I definitely suggest that you look at um, what you can do to get a more robust solution than just the free edition. Anyway, here's what the free edition looks like. Now, I've created a new prototype and it comes up with this screen and I wanted to stop here because it's really important that you choose the type of preset that you want and one of the things I like about this is that you can see it's really set up for you to do um, tablet and um, smartphone and website wireframing. I'm going to choose the website because that's kind of what we're working on um, but look over on the left hand side and you'll see that we have widgets for mobile and for web. Now in the mobile section there's a lot of stuff and some of these are really quite good like there's tap and hold and there's gestures and there's scroll bars and and comments um, there's even backgrounds for like iPhone backgrounds or Android backgrounds this one you'll see is like an alert button so these are fairly common in the um, smartphone um, interfaces but not so common in the desktop but some of them are shared and those that are shared you should be aware of and those that are not definitely don't use like this one is definitely whoops this one is definitely kind of an iOS um, widget so you don't necessarily want to use that in a desktop application but this looks like a nice fancy button that looks like a nice fancy button that looks like a nice nice fancy button and you can rescale them as needed um, but be aware that you know when they give you this size and it's got a PNG in the background or so um, they're not as flexible the problem is with using them as well you know you don't want to influence the design too much with the widgets that you use these are widgets that are designed really to go on these devices now if you go to the web you'll see that you have a much smaller list of different elements to design with we have things like labels and images and rich text and um, rectangles and a couple text boxes things like that check boxes um, and even an OK button but not a whole lot of other stuff now when you select these different items you can change the settings about them you can change the font settings you can change um, things like the border settings if you go over on the um, left hand side for whatever object you have selected you can go to the properties um, and if there's a template style you can apply those which I think is kinda nice um, you can change the text inside here you can do a tooltip that comes up when you hover over it um, you can change your size and your width if you want you can also do that interactively and you can see the numbers change as I'm dragging this so I can really get somewhat accurate if I really wanted to make a box that is 200 by 200 there you go I just did that now you can also change things such as padding or margins well not really margins but let's see here's the text inside and even the background color if we wanted to have a standard background color we could do that not necessarily suggesting that's the best thing especially for um, other elements like this text <clears throat> but you'll see as you move around objects they'll align to each other which can be quite useful the problem with that is once again here you'll see that that object has some padding and I don't necessarily want that on that label to have padding so you might think that you want to move it back but I wouldn't worry too much about it um, you can select multiple objects and group them together so now that's a group that will move together um, and you can try and rescale it together and it does seem to work a little bit better in here than the other software we were using just be aware of that and you can also do some other good things when it comes to navigation this is one of the things I really do like about this software you have the ability to even create menus with some pretty robust structure 
if I look at this, I've got a menu in a, and an item two, and it even has a sub menu in here. So you can do like drop down menus. Um, and that's kind of kind of cool that you can do that. Um, let's see, that one doesn't seem as though I can adjust the um, size of this thing right now. I might be able to set an icon, which is kind of cool. And if I set an icon behind it, then that will, I think, push out the button a little bit. But anyway, um, if I wanted to rename this, I can double click on it, change the value, and I'll call that home. On the next one, I'm going to call it about. Now, home does have a sub menu, and I could delete that item if I wanted to, but the about needs a sub menu. So I'm going to right click and choose add sub menu. So this will be about us. Let me add another sub, uh, another menu item after, and that will be mission. Oop, look at that. Now I'm going to actually drag that down here, and you'll see I actually just dragged mission under about. So it's really nice and interactive as well. Let me add another uh, menu item. I'm going to add another menu item after, which is going to be products. And you could see, of course, I could add sub menus with product one and product two and all sorts of stuff. Now that I've got basically a main navigation, um, I can actually start to design my page. There we go. And I'm going to create some links between pages. And I'm going to keep just a few different items here just because. So um, now let's create another page. Over on the right hand side, we can select this. Let's see if we can duplicate it. I don't think we can duplicate it. Maybe right click, duplicate. There we go. We can and duplicate it. And I'll call it about. And on this page, now I can just get rid of the things that I know I'm not going to need. But you'll see now we've got the two different pages and the way they look. And I can duplicate that and call it products. <clears throat> and on this page, I'm going to have a series of images. CV, copy that. There we go. So pretty easy for me to create um, the different objects that I need here. <clears throat> of course, I'm not doing a lot of things like adding page names and all that. We're just kind of exploring the software. Now, the next thing I want to do is add some links. So I'm going to make it so that the link on the home goes to screen one. Of course, I should probably rename that. Now you might want to go ahead and take a look at what um, comes up here too. Did you know you can uh, create a link by dragging an item onto the screen on the right? Yeah, we don't have to show that anymore. But let's just take a look. Drag that over there. Drag that there. Beautiful. Created the links. Now you'll notice that I've got the same thing on the different pages. So I'm going to actually delete it from the other page here. Oops, I didn't mean to create and delete the whole page. I'm going to select that item and delete it. Come back to this and see if I can distribute that. I wonder if I can like move that to the other pages. It would be kind of nice. I can at least copy it, go to the other page and paste, go to the other page and paste, and now I'm moving it to all the different screens. So let's see what we do. Next thing we're going to do is save this. <clears throat> and take a look at exporting to HTML. Now, one of the things about exporting this is that it wants you to use um, the uh, user note, which is one of the products that it has. You can, however, test this locally, which I kind of like. If you go to simulate or you click simulate over here, it's F5, you can actually test it locally. So you can see what it will look like. I can hit about and products and home and jump to all the different pages. And um, if you wanted to find out where this is, you can follow the URL here and just take a look. And I can go back and find that folder. Parent directory, there it is, project prototype one. 
and then that index page is the main page and then you'll see that you've got your different screens inside there. You do need that main page or this entire folder to be able to test this. Um, but it's great software um, and has a lot of great features as well as a bunch of awesome um, widgets that you can use and you can add more to the software. So I definitely suggest that you try it out because it's great. Um, and going through the process of wireframing is so important and when you have software that works in an elegant way um, it really makes this a lot of fun. So enjoy it and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.